Hey guys, today I have even more dynamic text tutorials for you. I know I have this like weird obsession with dynamic text, but I just find it so fun to do in motion. There's so many options and behaviors and just like I have so many ideas. I just can't wait to share them with you guys. Um, if you're interested in fonts like I am on my main channel, I actually did make a video about my favorite fonts to use in video that I will link to here. You should definitely check that out after you watch this video. But for now, let's just dive right into it. These are the three looks we're creating today. This one I'm calling Bullseye. This next one I'm calling Flip That Text. And this one here I'm calling Jackpot. Now, if you wanna to jump to any one of these tutorials, I will link chapters below. But if you're interested in all of them, let's just sit tight and dive right into it, shall we? So this first tutorial is Bullseye. Let me just type in some text here. And I'm actually going to copy that text and repeat it several times. We're gonna make sure it's centered and I'm going to center it on my screen here. All right, looks good to me. The next thing we need to do is make sure our text is selected in our project pane. We're going to hit text and let's select the layout tab. Now let's go to layout method and let's change it to path. And then let's head on down to path options and we're going to make it a circle and we're gonna change the radius of our text so that it creates like a complete circle here. So I'm going to tighten this up and I'm going to move this text into the center of my screen. And these dynamic guides kind of show me when I'm centered, perfect. If you don't see the dynamic guides, it's under view. Here we go, dynamic guides. You wanna make sure that is checked. The next thing I want to do is change my anchor point. So it's right in the center of my circle. You can find the anchor point tool down here under your tool menu, or you can right click over your object in the canvas and select anchor point. And I'm going to zoom in by hitting command plus, and we're going to move this red arrow so that the blue dot is right center in my circle. And I'm going to hit command minus to zoom out. And so now that we've got our anchor point set up, let's add a behavior to this circle. We're gonna go up to the top of the screen, behaviors, down to parameter, to overshoot. And we are going to look in our inspector window. And first let's head on over to apply to, to the apply to line. And we're gonna hit this drop down, properties, transform, and we're going to apply it to the scale all. Now I'm gonna queue up my playhead in my timeline to the very beginning. And let's head on back up to the inspector and look at this start value. So I'm just going to grab this zero, click it with my mouse button and drag down. And you can see I'm reducing the size of my start value. I just wanna show you what that does. You can actually make your start value a negative number despite what you might see here on this slider. I know that I actually wanna bring this to exactly negative 100%. So it's basically at nothing. And now if I run my playhead over my timeline, you can see that it grows and bounces. Let me play it back in real time. But it's a very slow motion, very slow, right? So what I'm going to do is take the overshoot behavior in my timeline, which is this purple bar. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna drag it down so it happens over about a second. So that same motion is going to happen much faster. Looks good, right? Okay, next thing we're going to do is add another behavior to this text. So I'm gonna select the text in my project pane. Let's go to behaviors, let's go to basic motion, and we're going to go to spin. And I'm going to leave this on the Z axis and my spin rate is going to be 10. And in this case, I'm actually going to leave the spin behavior the entire duration of my text. Now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to make some adjustments later, this is a very important step. I'm gonna select that text and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it. So now it's in a group all by itself. The next thing I'm gonna do is duplicate that group four times. So we have five total versions of our group. And then I'm going to modify the scale of these groups. They're all going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to queue up my playhead so I can see what I'm doing past the point of the overshoot. So the scale is consistent with all of our groups for the time being. I'm going to select this top group and I'm going to head on over to properties in my inspector window. And let's make this scale 225%. 
And let's go to the next group, not the text. We're gonna go to the next group. Let's make this one say 160. Let's go to this next group, change this value to 115. This group here is going to be 75. And this last group is just gonna be at 50%. So let me play back what we've got so far. So they all come in at the same time and they're all spinning in the same direction. We're going to change that now. So I'm going to leave the first text where it is. I'm gonna move my playhead down, let's say eight frames. And this next text will come in. Let's go down another eight frames and move the next one. Now we wanna change the spin direction on two of our circles. So if this biggest one is circle one, the second biggest one is two, next one is three, four, and five, we wanna focus on number two and number four. So that would be from the top of our project pane, this one would be number four. I'm going to select the text inside the group head on over to behaviors in the inspector window. And we're going to make this spin instead of the 10 value, which is what we had, we're gonna make it negative 10. And then we're gonna to go to circle number four, which is the second smallest. Again, go to that text, head on over to behaviors and make that value negative 10 as well. And now you can see that they're going in opposite directions. So now let's change the color of this text to give it even more contrast. So I'm going to select the text on circle number one, which is our biggest circle, on circle number three, and on circle number five, which is our smallest. We're gonna head on over to the inspector window text and make sure we're on appearance. And let's change the color of the face on those. And then let's select the bullseye text number two and number four, and let's change the color on those. Now we've got a lot of contrast. All right, there you go. There is your bullseye text effect. Let's move on now to flip that text. So here we are again in Apple Motion. I'm going to type in our text. I'm just gonna make it centered. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here. And then I'm going to go right up to behaviors and I'm going to go to text highlighter and we're gonna select pirouette. Let me just show you what that behavior does. So this looks very similar to what our end result is going to look like, except that we can't change the text in the middle of the flip. So first I'm going to take my pirouette behavior and I'm going to slide it down later in my timeline so that the text is static and then the pirouette happens. My next step is to select our text in the project pane. I'm going to right click and select group. And so now we've got a group with just that text inside of it. Now I'm going to make sure I'm highlighted on that group and I'm going to duplicate the group. So now I have two versions of the flip that text, but now we're gonna change the actual text in our second group. So I'm going to make sure I'm selected, not on the group that we just created, but on the text underneath it. Let me just stretch this out so you can see. And we're going to change this text literally to something else. So now let me turn off our original group so you can see what we've got here. We've got to something else, pirouetting. Now let's turn on our original group. So we've got both on here and we're just going to be using some keyframing and cropping to get the effect that we want. This is actually very simple. So I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the group of to something else, not the text. You won't be able to crop that, you need the group. And we're gonna head on over to properties in our inspector window. We're going to drop down crop, make sure it's checked. And we're going to keyframe on the right side. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here and I'm going to dial up my crop. But look, the slider only takes me to 200. I actually can grab that 200, hold down my mouse button and push my mouse forward to crop even higher. And so we're gonna leave that crop. In this case, it's on 1,369. And we're going to drag our playhead in our timeline 
to the point where the animation stops on the flip that text. So if you actually look very closely at my timeline here, I actually need to make my next keyframe before the behavior of the purple bar ends in my timeline. Now I'm going to make another keyframe and I'm going to drop that crop to zero. So that's what we're working with right now. Now we're gonna do the same thing on our original line of text. So we're gonna hit the original group we made. We're actually gonna time the cropping a little bit differently on this one. I don't wanna crop it until the second line of text is interfering with our original text and that there's overlap. So I'm gonna make that keyframe about right here. And we're going to, this time, we're gonna crop from the left. So I'm gonna make a keyframe here. We're actually gonna leave it at zero. And I'm going to run my playhead very slowly down my timeline and figure out where I need my next keyframe to be. I'm gonna have it just before the keyframe in my secondary text. I'm gonna make a keyframe on the left crop value and we're gonna run these numbers up and let's play it back. And now for our final text effect, this one I'm calling jackpot. All right, let's first start, of course, with creating our text. I'm going to type in three lines of text here, jackpot text. And then I'm actually going to highlight those three words and copy and paste them a couple times. So I've got nine rows of text here, you see that? The next thing I'm going to do is change my alignment to right justified. And then I'm going to change up this text a little bit. So what I wanna do is focus on the fifth line of text. This one here says pot. What I actually need it to do is to say Jack. So what I'm going to do is take this text at the end of my rows, the last row of text that actually says text, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to bring it to the top. So now my fifth line down says Jack. That's really important. You want your first word to be on the fifth line of the text. I'm gonna have it be a little bit screen left. We can play with that later. I'm not too worried about that at this point. And now what we wanna do is add a behavior. So make sure you're selected on your text in the project pane. Go up to behaviors, parameter, overshoot. And this time we're gonna apply the overshoot to properties, transform, position, and we're just gonna worry about the Y value. And I'm going to shrink down the overshoot behavior in my timeline, so this action is gonna happen a lot faster. I'm also gonna turn on my keyframe editor here. So if you don't see the keyframe editor, hit these little three diamonds, top right of your timeline. And then let's play with the start value on the overshoot. We're gonna bring it down as a negative number, let's say to here. And that's the default motion. I actually want a lot more bounce. So let's dial down the ramp duration. Let's keep an eye on our keyframe editor. You can see my little waveforms are moving as I adjust this ramp duration. This is something we want really springy. Maybe I'm gonna draw out that overshoot to happen a little longer and I'm gonna dial down that ramp duration even more. So that overshoot behavior to me looks really good. The next thing I wanna do is add a highlight effect to this text, so I'm gonna select it, either in my timeline or in my project pane. Let's go on over to behaviors, text highlighter, and we are going to do a shine effect. And I'm going to move this shine effect in my timeline past the overshoot. So after it stops moving, the shine will happen. The next thing we need to do is duplicate this text. So I'm gonna select it in my project pane, right click, hit duplicate. And with this new line of text, I'm going to change the alignment to center. And I actually need the word pot now to be the fifth word down. So I'm going to select the last two rows of my text here. And I'm going to hit Command X to delete them. And then I'm gonna arrow up to the top here and hit Command V to paste them. So now the word pot is my fifth row. I'm gonna head on over to properties and I'm going to move the position on here so it's next to my original text. I'm gonna worry about the spacing of this a little bit more later and getting everything centered on the screen for now. I'm just you know creating these different lines of text, and we're gonna duplicate that text one more time. 
This time I'm going to have the alignment be left center. I'm going to again copy the last two lines of my text, Command X to cut them. And now the fifth word down is text, which is what I want. I'm gonna head on over to properties and I'm going to slide that one over. Let me just play with the spacing here. Guys, while I'm perfecting my spacing, if you are enjoying this video, let me know by giving me that thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and ringing the notification bell so you never miss one of my tutorials. Okay, so I'm not concerned with the spacing within the canvas. I'm really just looking at the spacing of my text on this center line here, the fifth line. Like, do I like the way these three words look? In alignment together and I'm pretty happy with that. So now what we need to do is play with the timing of these elements. I'm going to head on down to my timeline. I'm going to close up my keyframe editor because I don't really need it anymore and I want to get a good look at everything I've got going on. And so what I need to do is just move my second and third texts down the timeline so they're staggered. And I think I want to play with the timing of my shine a little bit. I think I want the shines to come in a little sooner, especially on the second and third row, uh, columns of text. Now that I've got all of my text timed out right and lined up the way I want, I'm going to select the group level of this text and I'm going to apply a mask to this. So I'm, I'm selected on group in my project pane. We're gonna head on down to the center-ish of my screen and we're going to grab the rectangle mask tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the center line of text. So now at this point is where I can make a lot of adjustments to my text, like the scale and position of it. I'm gonna scale up, I'm, I'm selected on the group level now. I'm gonna scale up this text and I'm going to make sure that it is centered. And there you go, that is your last text effect. You guys think this was fun let me know give me that thumbs up thank you so much for creating with me today and i will see you again